Who loves Zelda Breath of the Wilds? Who's excited for Breath of the Wilds 2? Who's sick of waiting for Breath of the Wilds 2? Well, it seems like you've stumbled across the perfect video then. We've compiled a list of games that you absolutely must check out if you're a fan of Breath of the Wilds. And hopefully there's enough here to tide you over to the sequel. We're pretty sure that you're going to love all of these, but if you think that we're lying to you, then let us know in the comments below. Gaming is such a subjective topic after all, especially when you're trying to compare things to the masterpiece that is Breath of the Wilds. If you love a little bit of gaming content, don't forget to smash that subscribe button down there. And if you're a fan of The Legend of Zelda, maybe you can hit the like button while you're at it. Please? But anyways, let's get into today's video. As we're sure all you Zeldies are aware, Breath of the Wilds has been the recipient of quite the number of accolades and awards. Among the most impressive is 2017's Game Awards Game of the Year. So we thought, what better way to kick things off than with a fellow recipient of Game of the Year, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. This game deserves all of the accolades that it gets, often being praised as one of the greatest games of all time. So as far as quality is concerned, The Witcher is definitely up there with Zelda. You play as Geralt of Rivia in a third-person role-playing action-adventure experience. Geralt is a monster hunter of sorts, a witcher, who is searching for his adoptive daughter Ciri, who is being hunted by the Wild Hunt. This is an extremely simplified and unjust version of events that takes place within The Witcher, as the game is immensely story-driven. In fact, this is the main thing that sets The Witcher apart from Zelda. There's no denying that if there's one thing that Breath of the Wilds is lacking in, it's story. And The Witcher definitely does not suffer the same plight at all. Firstly, Geralt actually talks, unlike Link, the ever-silent protagonist. And there's even a dialogue tree in almost every conversation, giving you so much control over the events of the game. In fact, you have so much control that your choices lead you to one of 36 different endings. So, does that mean we have to play the game another 35 times? Well, if you're willing to sink about 50 hours in for the main quest alone every time, then go for it. And let us know how it goes, because ain't nobody got time for that. Everything that Breath of the Wilds does right, The Witcher also does right. From epic landscapes and gruesome enemies to endless side quests and day and night cycles, there's not so much of that classic Zelda puzzle solving, but this isn't a list of clones, it's a list of awesome games, and The Witcher is definitely an awesome game. Now, it must be mentioned that the Switch might not be the best place to experience this one. CD Projekt Red did an absolutely amazing job in bringing this one over for Nintendo fans. The world might just be the largest that exists on this tiny console, and the loading times are fantastic. Unfortunately though, this means that the graphics have taken a pretty decent hit. So if you own a PC or some other console, then you might be better off playing it there. But we own one, and we still chose the Switch version, because this port truly is so damn impressive. If you're looking for another truly epic fantasy adventure after your time in Hyrule, then look no further. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt really tickles all of those Breath of the Wild itches and has the potential to be played for at least another 100 hours. We're ashamed to admit that we've only just got around to playing this one, so don't be like us and don't leave The Witcher in your backlog. Next up, we've got one of my all-time favourite games. It honestly feels like such a perfect time to talk about this one, as we're comparing games to one of my other all-time favourites. I'm super excited to ramble on for ages to you guys about the masterpiece that is Dragon Quest XI-S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition. And that's the first and last time we're going to be referring to it by its extremely long and annoying full name. Now, Dragon Quest XI is actually quite a lot different to Breath of the Wilds, and it's kind of difficult to put into words exactly why we feel so strongly about including it here. But first of all, it's an amazing game. And by amazing, we mean it's so good that you'll want to take it home and introduce it to your mom. Yeah, there's just something about the personality of this one that makes it feel like a Zelda game. Maybe it's the bright visuals and stunning environments. Maybe it's the fantastic cast of diversive characters you'll meet along the way. Maybe it's the plethora of interesting side quests you'll go out of your way to complete. Does it make sense if we just say it feels like Breath of the Wild? I hope so, because on paper, it, it's, it's not really. 
There's just as much exploring as there is to do in Zelda, but it doesn't take place in such an open world. They're more like interconnected open areas, if you will, and there's not quite as much freedom, like you're not allowed to climb up literally everything or jump off anywhere you want. Dragon Quest has always been a pretty faithful and old school JRPG, and Eleven is no different. You'll recruit a team of party members to help fight alongside you in turn-based combat. Now I know those words, turn-based combat, is going to turn a lot of you off, and that's okay. But just know that this is one of the most fun and engaging examples of it we have ever come across. All of your other favourite JRPG elements are here too. The narrative is ridiculously engaging and kept us immersed for the entire 90-something hours that we played. Even if you took out the extremely enjoyable gameplay, you would still have a great motion picture that could go up against some of Hollywood's finest. There's a skill tree for each character, a leveling system, and a wide variety of monsters roaming around the overworld. It's also worth noting that one of my favourite artists of all time is responsible for the character designs here, Akira Toriyama, the same man that gave the world the magic that is Super Saiyans and the Dragon Ball universe. I love him. Echoes of an Elusive Age is truly a masterpiece. In fact, I almost had to physically restrain this guy from saying, you need to play this game, <laughs> or this is 100% absolutely the best thing to ever happen to the human race. I just love Dragon Quest, man. I just love it. Well, I wouldn't quite go that far. It's definitely well worth your time while waiting for Breath of the Wilds too. So we'll skip back to something a little bit more closely correlated to Breath of the Wilds now. Immortals Phoenix Rising. In fact, this game was criticised for its similarities with the Zelda title. I mean, can you imagine that? Its greatest weakness is that it's too similar to one of the greatest games of all time. That's like saying peanut butter's bad because it tastes too much like Reese's Pieces. That's ridiculous. Peanut butter is delicious. Immortals has you playing as the titular character Phoenix in an open world action RPG set in the fictional Golden Isle. Here you will encounter Hermes, the Greek god of travellers and thieves. He will inform you of a curse that's been placed on the humans by the Titan Typhon, turning them to stone. The rest of the Greek gods have also been cursed, being transformed into far lesser, far more hilarious versions of their former selves. Like Ares, the god of war, who is now this timid little helpless chicken dude. Phoenix, being the badass individual she is, chooses to help out. As you can probably gather from the story overview, Immortals leans pretty heavily into Greek mythology. In our opinion, this is a pretty smart move by Ubisoft, as there is so much rich source material to draw from. Phoenix Rising plays pretty similarly to Breath of the Wilds, but instead of criticising it for that, we're praising it. The Golden Isle is separated into four main distinct areas, with a helpless god in each, somewhat reminiscent of the four Divine Beast challenges. It's also littered with vaults. These are separate stages away from the aisle that will present Phoenix with a range of puzzle, platforming, or combat challenges. Sound familiar? It should, because they pretty much act exactly like Breath of the Wild's mini shrines. Immortals is actually pretty unique on this list, as it dives far further into one of The Legend of Zelda's classic tropes, puzzles. These things are everywhere. Apart from the aforementioned vaults, the world is absolutely littered with them. So much so that there's sometimes no room on your map because it's just covered with fins. These puzzles range from the relatively simple to the extremely challenging and obscure, and they come in such a variety. The world is home to a range of enemies from Greek mythology, like Gorgons, Chimeras, or Cyclops to name a few. Many of these act as mini-bosses in the same way as Lionel's or Talus's do in Breath of the Wilds. Let's be honest, a Hinox is pretty much just a Cyclops anyway. The visuals and overall feel of this title are undoubtedly similar to Breath of the Wilds, but despite all this, Immortals Phoenix Rising has managed to forge its own identity. Possibly the most obvious difference is that it's narrated in its entirety by the Titan Prometheus, best known in mythology for stealing fire from the gods and giving it to the people. The events of the game are presented as a prophecy of sorts that Prometheus is relaying to Zeus. The banter between these two is genuinely hilarious, and the humour definitely helps to set Phoenix Rising apart. In fact, whenever any of these gods interact with each other, it makes for some pretty funny and sometimes perverted dialogue. I'm sure it comes as no surprise that Aphrodite, the god of love and intimacy, is quite a hornbag. 
Now we played this game when it was first released and it did have a couple of technical issues in the form of glitches and crashes on the Switch. Now it's entirely possible that these have been rectified now. Back then it was the only thing stopping this game from being S tier. I honestly couldn't put it down throughout my entire playthrough. It is 100% worth playing if you're looking forward to another Breath of the Wilds. We'll take a little break now from big budget AAA titles from massive studios and talk about one of the things that the Switch does best, indies. You don't need a butt ton of cash to make a quality game inspired by or reminiscent of one of the greats. Oceanhorn 2 Knights of the Lost Realm is one of those games. Upon first glance, it should be quite obvious why it's earned a spot on this list. It is visually stunning, with beautifully detailed areas and well-rendered character models. Those colours just pop right out of your screen. Admittedly, Oceanhorn does play a little more like one of the older Zelda titles. The world of Gaia is semi-open world, but does feel like a series of areas linked together by loading screens. There are some fully realised dungeons here, or temples if we're using Zelda lingo, but again, these feel slightly separated from the main world. The main protagonist is even equipped with a hookshot, doesn't say anything, and has a strong affinity for smashing pots with his sword. Oh, and he's even dressed in this quite familiar looking shade of blue. This hero is joined on his quest by two party members, a robot fellow and Trin, a young woman of royal descent. Together, you will set off to unite the world against the evil forces of the dark warlock Mesmeroth. These party members cannot be directly controlled, but play a pivotal role in helping you solve many puzzles through the use of commands, and can even help you in battle. Speaking of battle, the combat is a relatively simple hack and slash style, but the addition of your party members, long range weapons and a shield make for quite the enjoyable experience. Oceanhorn doesn't feel quite like the epic grand adventure like some of the other games on this list, but for half the price of a AAA title there really isn't anything to complain about. A Zelda like indie gem might be the perfect game to tide you over until the next big Breath of the Wilds. If you've been yearning for the magical beauty that is Breath of the Wilds, then Yonder, the Cloud Catcher Chronicles is the perfect substitute. Developed by Australian indie devs, Prideful Sloth, Yonder takes inspiration from Animal Crossing, Harvest Moon, Skyrim, and of course, The Legend of Zelda. Now, can we just take a minute to appreciate just how epic that lineup of games is? In Yonder, you'll find yourself shipwrecked on a magical island named Jamea where you'll have to collect little critters known as sprites in order to banish a mystical fog that has shrouded the island. Apart from the initial quest being given to you at the beginning, you're pretty much left to your own devices to explore the massive open world. Jamea is absolutely stunning and its vast expanses often remind us of the rugged beauty that is Hyrule. It also feels just as large with eight distinct biomes to explore, ranging from tropical beaches to snowy mountains. Similarly to Breath of the Wilds, there's a day-night cycle and a dynamic weather system that even includes seasonal changes as you progress through your adventure. To accompany your overall sprite collecting quest, you will meet many NPCs around the island that need your help with different side quests. These will help break up the game-spanning sprite search and are thoroughly entertaining. Probably our favourite part about Yonder, and the thing that separates it from The Legend of Zelda the most, is its farming mechanics. Jamea is littered with all these cute little adorable creatures that are all tameable. All you have to do is feed them their favourite food and lead them back to your farm, where they'll produce some kind of product for you to sell. You can also harvest seeds in the wild and plant them on your farm for an even wider variety of resources. This farming mechanic can easily eat up hours of your time and always being on the hunt for the most adorable addition to your farm is heaps of fun. If you miss exploring the wild expanses of Hyrule, and possibly even searching the land for that perfect horse to tame, then we're pretty confident you'll love the cosy indie gem that is Yonder, the Cloudcatcher Chronicles. We're going to go full circle now and talk about some kind of obvious options originating from Nintendo themselves. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity is the only game with any true affiliation to Breath of the Wilds, acting as a prequel of sorts, but maybe since it's such a different style of game, it hasn't been at the top of your backlog. Reliving the calamity through your own eyes in the hack and slash style format of Hyrule Warriors, the game drops you right in the middle of the action. This provides you with an entirely fresh perspective of Hyrule from a time where it had once thrived. 
Here you're able to play as any of the diverse characters introduced to you in Breath of the Wild and more. You will rip through hordes of monsters and by hordes we literally mean frame rate dropping seas of them. The combat is honestly so satisfying and each character has a range of unique melee moves complete with their own rad special move which is way more powerful. These allow you to part the seas of enemies like some kind of morbid Moses. Age of Calamity, as a prequel to Breath of the Wild, treats you to some canon story elements and gives you a glimpse into the lives of Hyrule's champions. Now we don't want to spoil too much about it or go into too much detail because we actually already covered it in our first ever video. If you'd like to learn more, you can follow this link to it. In the same vein as Age of Calamity, it might come as no shock to you, but if you're chomping at the bit for Breath of the Wild 2, then why not go back and explore some of the older Zelda titles? Among the Switch's arsenal you will find three, or depending on when you're watching this, possibly four other Zelda entries. Now these don't play exactly like Breath of the Wilds, as this game was truly innovative and changed up what it meant to be a Zelda title. But some of these older games did the same back in the day. Catching a glimpse into the rich tapestry of Hyrule's history might be the perfect interim to Breath of the Wild 2. Games like Skyward Sword and Link's Awakening are brilliant remasters or remakes of their older counterparts, and going back to solve these classic puzzles is a great way to freshen up your Zelda brain. But our top suggestion for a game for you to play while waiting for Breath of the Wilds 2 has to be Ocarina of Time. Ocarina, much like Breath of the Wild, flipped the series on its head in the best possible way, giving us our first ever 3D Zelda adventure. Now it's not quite open world, but exploring Hyrule in this up close and personal perspective still provides you with that sense of wonder and lust for exploration that Breath of the Wild did so well. Originally released on the N64, Ocarina of Time has made its way into Switch owners' backlogs once again with the 64's addition to the online service as part of the expansion pack. This online service has had a questionable response to say the least, but we don't want to get too far into it here because we will be discussing it further later on in a new exciting project. Ocarina undoubtedly feels like an older game these days, but for us it played such an important part in our gaming journey that being able to relive that on the Switch is an invaluable experience. In fact, Ocarina played such an important role in gaming history in general. While the older Zelda games don't exactly provide the open world experience that Breath of the Wild does, Learning about the history and lore of Hyrule is the perfect way to prepare yourself for the next game in the franchise. Let's be honest, there's nothing really like Breath of the Wilds, but hopefully some of these games can fill the void that this amazing Zelda title has left in our hearts while we wait for number two. We've played all of these games though, so if there's any Breath of the Wilds coping mechanisms you can think of that we haven't thought of, please leave them in the comments below. We could really use them. Now that we're done pining over our favourite Zelda game, we would like to thank each and every one of you for supporting us both here, on Twitch, and even on Instagram. It's you guys that inspire us to keep making content that has provided us with some amazing opportunities that we can't wait to tell you more about soon. Thanks again for making it to the end. And if you're still here, we appreciate you. We'll see you next time. <laughs>